Engineer vs. Designer is brought to you by the Mojo 3D Printer. Now you can have 3D printing right at your desktop at a remarkably low cost. With the magic of Mojo, there's really no limit to your creativity. See it at mojo3dprinting.com. Josh, if engineering were a mountain bike race, you'd shred the trail on your modified 1984 Nash skate. <laughs> yes, I would. That would make no sense, though, <laughs> but I would. Welcome to Engineer vs. Designer, the podcast for product designers, engineers, and anyone who's ever wished they could go on a mountain biking adventure and put it on the corporate Amex. Ka-ching! My name is Josh. And my name is Adam. And this week, we had a chance to sit down with... Quite possibly the coolest guy ever to call himself an engineer, yep, the one and did. only Mr. Joe Graney of Santa Cruz Bicycles. Oh, uh, yeah. Play the tape. Play it. Joe, if you had a choice between having your lower torso removed and replaced with a mountain bike or eating nothing but jellied rice cakes for the rest of your life, which <laughs> would you choose? I mean, obviously, I would have the bottom half of my, of my body replaced with a mountain bike. I mean, that would be awesome. Yeah, and you'd probably get the sheets dirty <laughs> at night, but other than that, <laughs> yeah, make, <laughs> make it sweet love with your lady. It's got to get awkward uh, in the, in that situation. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and driving might be a challenge, but yeah, you can just have your bike everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Oh well, so Joe, Santa Cruz bikes, high-end custom mountain bike brand we all know and love. Why is Santa Cruz bike? Why is a Santa Cruz bike different? Uh, from Josh's little pink Barbie bike. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I haven't seen Josh's pink Barbie bike, but I can tell you uh, we we don't uh, model any after characters. There's no Disney character uh, bikes. Uh, <laughs> no princesses on any of ours. Uh, mm, okay. I mean, one thing a lot of our bikes are really used for people who are kind of mountain bike enthusiasts. So meant to be taken off road. Um, okay. They're not really like the mountain bike that. Uh, college kid will get for riding around um, between classes on campus unless their campus is like you see Santa Cruz where there's a bunch of good single track between the buildings. Um, but yeah, they're, they're kind of enthusiast level bikes. We, we try and make bikes that will last a long time um, because you uh, a lot of our customers ride bikes pretty hard and are, and are brutal on them. So it's also probably a good bit more expensive than uh, Josh's Barbie bike as right, well. Right, right. <laughs> Well, and would uh, you so say, only, I mean, they're probably more custom bikes. as well, right? There's there's more custom components going into it, more custom measurements and all that kind of thing. Yeah, we start with, uh, we have almost 20 different types of mountain bike models available. And we use a couple of, most of our bikes have, like, uh, really all of the bikes have suspension of some kind. Uh, some are just front suspension, which is a telescopic suspension fork. A lot of the bikes have uh, articulating rear wheel suspension, and then the amounts of uh, vertical wheel travel is what you define it as. Ranges from about uh, four inches up to ten inches. So these mm-hmm. are all different types of riding, and they'll accommodate different um, width tires. Uh, some will uh, give you options for different drive trains. We make bikes in aluminum and in carbon fiber, um, really, which is about um, weight and stiffness between the two materials. Mm-hmm. Uh, carbon's a bit more expensive as well, so different levels of, of how to put your bike together. And every one of the bikes we make that chips on our Santa Cruz um, factory is built really custom to order. So mm-hmm. you can choose different colors, different shock absorbers, um, front and rear. You can choose different levels of components, how many gears you want, uh, kind of everything under the sun that right. you can choose for the Absolutely. options. You, now, you work uh, in engineering at Santa Cruz Bicycles Oddly enough, in Santa Cruz, California, what is that like? Crazy. Um, <laughs> it is. It, I mean, it's pretty awesome. Uh, <laughs> I was. I, it really is. Uh, it, I mean, it's a great. It's a great job. I mean, we hang out. We uh, work on what our next toy is going to be. So we have all of the rat <laughs> years before anybody else gets it. Um, <laughs> right on. <laughs> And we get to think, we design the bike to be exactly what it is that we want. And right. then we just jam it down everybody else's throat. And it's like, well, obviously you'd want the same thing as us because <laughs> we know much better than you do. Right. <laughs> We've been riding this thing for two years. You just, maybe you're not ready for it yet. <laughs> You'll learn. <laughs> well, well, what, would um, you, what would you say is the best thing about your job? Um, man, there's, there's so many 
cool aspects to it. I mean, obviously, some of the some of the, the, the trips that we get to go on, where we'll go, you know, I've been to um, really all over the world to go ride bikes and spend time with our professional athletes. What's, what would be a good example of that? What's a cool exotic place you've gone uh, for work, quote unquote? Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, right. Well, when we came out on our carbon uh, downhill bike, uh, the V10, a couple of years ago, uh, I went to Portugal and we rode downhill bikes with the racers for a few days to get them comfortable before the race season started. So we rode in Portugal and we went to uh, Slovenia where the first race was. So drove across Europe on a little road wow. trip and um, went to go ride in Slovenia and then came home. And that was like a, a two week trip um, for work. And then in, in this past January, I went to Italy in Northern Italy Good and grief. spent three days working with the team and uh, suspension company Fox Racing Shocks as everything got tuned in um, for the race season again. Do you ever complain about anything? Because I don't think you def- I definitely don't think you deserve to ever complain about anything in your life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think probably all I do is complain. Um, but, you know, we, I, we do a lot of, um, we do a lot of, of complaining in, in the engineering department in general. But I, I welcome that stuff because being like super critical of everything is what makes us make everything better. If you, you look at, um, you look at the bikes that we have right now and they're awesome. I mean, they're so good <laughs> that, you know, complaining about seems ridiculous, but we know that we look at bikes and we're like, man, how are we going to make it us any better? Mm. How are we, how can we possibly make this better? But you look back at what we were riding two years ago and now nobody, everybody here would, would shun that thing as being a piece of crap. Uh-huh. And I, I think it's just <laughs> that constant critical eye, which some people might take as complaining, uh, that like allows you to see where you can always improve, that you're never really happy with the, with the final result. There's always something else you could tweak. Uh, so with that, what, what is the most challenging part uh, of your job? It, that is probably also the, the, one of the more challenging parts is that everybody is so critical. It's, it's hard to not take things personally um, uh-huh. when, it's, you know, when it's your baby and you're very invested in your design or, or your idea. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, it's, it's tough to not th- take things personally when it's really not somebody, um, you know, attacking your idea, just challenging you to, to really justify what you want to do. You have any special techniques, you know, like, like Zen breathing techniques or anything to kind of, kind of calm yourself down, make sure that, uh, you don't punch people in the face inappropriately. That kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> We've always got a we've always got a fridge stocked with cold beers in the office. So, <laughs> right, <know>. uh, <laughs> that works. All right, so so you actually, uh, Joe, I know you do a lot of work to inspire the youngins to get interested in uh, science, technology, engineering, and math, STEM, as they call it. I mean, so how do you do that? How do you get kids interested and excited about about uh, engineering, and and why do you think that's important? Um, well, it's pretty easy to get kids stoked on bikes. Because kids are already <laughs> stoked on bikes. So you show up with a super rad bike, and that's pretty much all you're going to do. Um, kids, are, kids love bikes because they have bikes themselves. Um, so they understand it. They understand how they work. And you show up with, like, a, you know, virgin carbon downhill bike, which is, you know, like a Ferrari type of machine in a classroom, and you've got everybody's attention right there. Um, yeah. And then you know you then you start to explain how on a bike you use math or you use geometry and you use these times tables even with elementary school kids I mean nobody ever tells them why they have to memorize all this crap mm. um, why they have to do this work and for me like I was saying in the beginning if I don't understand the benefit that I'm getting out of this thing that I'm learning I, it becomes really difficult for me to have enough personal discipline to actually do work like it, it has to relate in some way that I, I'm going to care about so I just basically make it so the kids think the same thing they're so stoked on the bike and you say well you know if you like bikes then you should probably like math because you know you don't get tricks if you don't get math, <laughs> right? Right. Um, yeah, and exactly. yeah, and, and and everybody seems to get it. Um, 
And and for me, it really comes down to just remembering in school uh, that I I didn't like it. You know, it wasn't like I wasn't <laughs> good at some of the courses, but it just seemed like such a useless waste of my life to be sitting in this class, right, right. bored to tears with somebody writing equations on the board and not knowing how algebra was ever going to do anything for me. Yeah, so boring, no application. And we often hear engineering students complain that their education is too theoretical. I would have complained about that and uh, that they should be doing more hands-on learning and less uh, matrix algebra. So you'd agree with that, really? Yeah, I mean, I almost flunked on my like, linear algebra for engineers course because, and I, I've never never seen any reason to use it since I'm sure there is, uh, you know, and I'm sure somebody who's smarter than me could explain why you would ever care. But, um, it doesn't seem like, it seemed like that was some w- academic wonk who just sucked some portion of my life away. That I would never <laughs> <get back. laughs> uh, yes. Look out. Engineer vs. Designer is brought to you by Mojo 3D Printer, a world-class professional 3D printer for only $185 a month. To find out how you can give your big idea a little mojo, visit mojo3dprinting.com. So you use a combination of digital tools and good old-fashioned workshop tools to design and build bikes. It seems like, you know, we've talked in the past about how you, you both use finite element analysis on the computer as well as just crushing bikes in the shop. Um, to, to find out when they break. Why is it important to do both of those things? Why is it important to build things physically and digitally? Well, um, you know, a lot of the stuff that you do uh, digitally is kind of at the beginning to make sure that a lot of times it just helps you from figuring out stuff that's um, it's a bit late and it slows the project down. You have to make changes later on after you've made tooling and it, and it sort of delays things. Um, but I mean, when you, a lot of the bikes are, you, they can't, you know, you can't replicate every pixel like you do on the screen. Some of the shapes be different, or you'll have material differences that you don't have this purely homogenous uh, material that is uh, triangulated and, and meshed. A lot with aluminum bikes, there's welding too, so the weld profiles are to change, and whether or not somebody burned away part of the tube or maybe cut the tube in a way that you weren't anticipating. Um, so you find out a bunch of stuff um, by doing it physically. And then uh, with some of the tests that we do, it's, I, it's, it's super fun to smash stuff. <laughs> oh, <And yeah. laughs> so you get the crowds over in the test lab for, for good impact tests when you're, when you're dropping 100 plus pounds from a meter high onto a bike. Um, you know, it makes a lot of noise and, and it's exciting. And so, I mean, there's always a, <laughs> I mean, that's fun stuff. <laughs> I, I will never outsource to that stuff. Excellent. Uh, well, this past week we asked uh, our Twitter followers to submit questions for the show. And Daniel Benterman uh, wants to know what you worked on before joining Santa Cruz. Uh, so, I mean, I, I should point out that like the reason that I eventually ended up going to engineering school was to design bikes. So that's what really what motivated me to go back to college. I dropped out of a couple of schools, uh, you know, I was going for accounting and then I was going for you know, women's studies or something. And then I dropped out <laughs> and was just bumming around. And, um, well, you weren't just, just bumming so, around. You were riding bikes as well, right? You were, you were, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was riding bikes. I had, I had a job, you know, like a, a real style J O B in a warehouse. <laughs> and I, um, you know, but I, I could see after working there for a while, at first it was like, yeah, I'm bringing home, you know, paycheck and I got an apartment and everything was great. And, but then I, I started to realize, you know, there were guys that were 10 years older than me, uh, doing the exact same thing. And I, I didn't want to be there um, mm. in 10 years. So, um, you know, with the bikes thing, I thought, uh, you know, maybe I should, maybe I should go figure out how to design bike parts. I'm like, that would be cool. So, um, I went to, so that's when I, I went, got me into engineering school. But when I was in engineering school, I had, I did an internship at uh, a large bicycle manufacturer in the Midwest. Um, and I was really fortunate to get, get the internship when I was there, their product development process was 
sort of heavily influenced by their marketeering department. And mm. the the marketers really were more chasing trends rather than kind of looking at what worked best. Mm. Uh, and that disillusioned me about the bicycle business. So then I, uh, I got another internship at um, Design Continuum, which is like a ID mm-hmm. uh, engineering product design house. Industrial um, design. You, exactly. ID, yeah, a, lot of, mean, yeah. a lot of ID yeah. people. And that was really amazing. I, I, I got this internship and they introduced me to this client only because I was a mountain biker. So it's another mm-hmm. way that bikes have always you know, helped me out. And I got introduced to this uh, client because he was a mountain biker and I was breaking the ice. And I got heavily involved in a project working on doorknobs for Schlage Law Company. Uh-huh. And I worked on the doorknob design for like two years. Like we redesigned the mechanism and it was this incredible process, of, uh, a product that nobody ever thinks about. I mean, there's, right. nobody gives doorknobs a second look. Um, and, uh, and it was great. I worked in worked for Continuum for several years after after college. They hired me right out of there, and I moved to San Francisco and worked on all sorts of stuff. Um, and then dot com bust came around to San Francisco. I got laid off, and um, I got introduced to some of the folks out in Santa Cruz, and just started mm-hmm. harassing them for months until they until they gave me a job. Right on, fantastic That's the way to do it. <laughs> Well, and uh, while we're taking listener questions, uh, Day Tedeschi, Tedeschi wants to know uh, what your favorite color is. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> Possibly the hardest one of the show. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to go with orange. I'm going to say oh, orange. All right. I'll Would it be like, that. are you I'll talking about... That. Like a rusty orange or like a hot, you know, construction site orange? Uh, no, like construction site orange, like a blaze orange. Right, right. Uh, you know, I'm down with. Although that, that white to blue fade of the background of, of Pro Engineer is probably a close <laughs> second as I stare at it. Constantly. All right. <laughs> it's, it's the background to everything I see now. <laughs> All right, man. Well, uh, Joe Graney, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Hey, thank you guys. It was a good time. Hey, no worries. Yeah, thanks a lot. You know, I was really hoping, Josh, that uh, having Joe on the show was going to make me feel cool by association. (laughs) But I really think that uh, that (laughs) hanging out with cool people just kind of makes us look all the dirtier by comparison. Not going to happen. Yeah. Yep. That's it. Geeks only from now on. New policy. (laughs) If you would like to send high-end mountain bikes to EVE HQ definitely address those to Josh. And if you'd like to send a size XXL leotard and or tiara, <laughs> please address that to Josh as well. If you hate I'll our guts it. and uh, think we should know about it, head over to engineerversdesigner.com and let us know how you really feel. And if you want to see us sad and lonely, be sure to like us, plus one us, tweet us, or whatever else as social media has been correlated with losing the will to live. This show was edited by the Simon Martin. Our theme music is by Ross Hartman. Yep, we'll see you next week. And remember, replacing mom's laundry detergent with bubble bath <laughs> is not only hilarious, it puts hair on your chest. That was a, that was a good day. That was Chesticles. a really good day. <laughs> it was indeed. <laughs> a production of EBD Media.